because you say Cold goes in, can't get it. Alfami looking for the slicing master straight onto the back line. Cold is on the front line as Boxer goes down. Patrick takes him out. Now Patrick with the Featherstorm Whipper with a perfect taunt. But the stop watches out. New Jack needs to do a lot in this fight because Nemesis is shredding through Origin. There is no escape. There is no surviving. Fnatic, clean sweep, Origin. Not quite able to find the damage on to Sven who goes on a killing spree, killing that enemy top laner. It's been scaring into the hourglass. Not going to be kept alive too much longer, except he will. It's a kill for Broken Blade on the Zazel. TSM's got a quadra. And against many people's expectations, TSM will take down Cloud9 yet again. Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Duan, this is Matt Hempstead, and we're right in the thick of the summer split. On top of that, Rift Rivals is just around the corner. Matt, uh, what did you see over the weekend that stood out to you? Well, over in the LPL, we don't talk about it much, but today we will because we've got Raz on the show, which is another big deal. Love that guy. <laughs> um, but also, I mean, Fun Plus Phoenix is a team that kind of gets overshadowed by Invictus, and they had that playoff collapse last split. So all of a sudden, you know, you look at this team, and they're 6-0. and they're being dominant, and it, it's really crazy to watch. And then in the LEC, we had G2 versus Fnatic for the, the title of the last undefeated team, and it was an absolute domination, but who wins might surprise you a little bit. And then the LCS, of course, we still see people going up and down the standings, but we saw 100 Thieves make a move up instead of continuing to lose games. So very hype. Maybe they'll continue that into playoffs. We'll have to wait and see. So exciting. Well, let's jump right into it. There were some absolutely huge matchups, like Matt said, in the LCS and LEC. So let's get a taste of the action with some highlights. This is it. Optics last stand. Scarlet, he's coming to the party again. Scarlet's got back up this time. He's saying, hey, boys, I brought the whole case. Big moving forward, looking to grab the binding. Does manage to land it now down onto Bjergsen, who's going to be in some trouble. Broken Blade's going to be going on a killing spree. More damage coming out, though, and TSM are absolutely shredded. Nexus turret number two out of the picture now. Nexus under fire. TSM looking to defend. Optics still putting in the work, and the Nexus is down. to kill him, but Zayz with the foul. Maybe able to save him. Fake goes down. That's the reset. The Aatrox ult he needs. Now Zayz is going to get jumped on. And Zlikvich tries to dunk on Afro Moon. Flips back and able to get that kill for the shutdown, but he can't make it back. Over to the Shroud. He gets knocked up. He gets killed. When they need to. In fact, Clever, is he too far forward here? Buffer through there. TP in. Gonna lock one in. But Ryu forced to flash away. Here comes Zayzel once more. Liquid instantly in the back. He's gonna try and take the Ryu into the shroud. He goes. He gets the kill. Over the wall. He needs to go, but does get shut down. It's enough to get an upset here as Elders dive towards the fountain, dive under the Nexus, and take their win over Cloud9. In their engages if either team messes up. And big stun though! Now it's going to start off here. We're going to see Smoothie going into the stasis here. Immediately, Sven also going to be keeping himself alive just for a moment. Smoothie taken down. Also going to be Ole traded away. TSM on the retreat. Acadian's going to oh, be taken Hunter. down. Hunter's popping off! The wings of death! But it will be a one for one there. Definitely Haunter and Froggen. Now going to be pressuring onto the tier three into the mid lane as well. Froggen in some trouble. Critical positioning error will be heavily punished. Golden Guardians grouped up, trying to play protect the president. The VIP is down, and Bjergsen will again find his mark. Broken Blade kills contracts, and the Golden Guardians stand 3v5, 2v5, 1v5. After 49 minutes, the longest game of summer split, TSM will take down the Golden Guardian. Caps looking for the chase, but is Jankos going to be able to do enough? Whippo heals up, flashes away, and Caps is down! This is personal for Fnatic. Once again, Caps is dead. Allowing you to gain any... Oh! oh God! No way you should be able to hit that cap. Still able to get away, but Hillisang on the chase couldn't quite land the tier man. Hillisang, he's vying for the best pike in Europe. Cap strong, oh, no way! Has to flash the wall. Hillisang trying to clear out the wave as much as he can. Because here's Boxer, the knockback on Wanda, but Wanda dodging around with the Vanguard. They jump back in. Two kills to Fnatic. Whippo on the chase here as well as the battle rages in the Jeet and the Fnatic jungle. Whippo coming in. Yankos trying to get onto Nemesis Perks, almost dying up towards the top side as he will go down. Wanda dies. Yankos dies, Perks dies, Mickey dies. There comes the destiny, Perks flashing away, but caught him a stun card and the follow-up. 
just deliver the kills to Fnatic. Cavs trying to dodge around here, but Hillisang's on the chase. The stun card connects, and now Mickey is fed to the Wolves. Nemesis is there on the is. Nexus, looking for the win here. Fnatic do to G2 what G2 have done so many times before. They obliterate them. Yes, you saw that right. Fnatic put an end to G2's dominance and handed them the first yeah. loss of the season. Meanwhile, Fnatic is the lone undefeated team. So how did Fnatic get the better of G2, Matt? Well, a couple of things kind of stand out. One, we all knew that G our Pike would be like the champion that's going to be contested, yes. right? Hillisang plays it for Fnatic, and everyone plays it G2. for <laughs> G2. But Hillisang got it, and he was doing crazy things with it. He was predicting flashes. He was yeah. being a main engage. So uh, really impressed by that. And obviously, that's going to be huge going into Rift Rivals, too, because everyone's got to challenge that Pike coming up from EU. Um, but for G2, it was really Broxa. In the early game, he was everywhere they had to be. He got some early lead, leads in basically every lane. And even on counter ganks, he just he was right in the area on that Gregus. And by the end, he was just doing insane damage too because Gregus, if he gets that AP and he gets that lead, he can continue building aggressively and just kind of snowballs from there. So between like him and Whippo, it was very dominant yeah. and uh, very impressed. I mean, you expect G2 to just keep winning, but I guess... Uh, Fnatic put some big prep into this game. They almost lost to XL the next day and give them the first win, but that's not important. So uh, obviously they just practiced they for just G2. They just practiced for G2, <laughs> exactly. And they put a lot of into it, a lot of energy, and it almost cost them uh, to an almost as impressive loss. But <laughs> they, they, it's okay. They, they beat the back, so undefeated team. Yeah, so like, that's the most important thing. Uh, I think this is really great, you know, just saying for G2 that they have someone who can take yes, them down, it's which puts the fire under their butt. Uh, let's jump over to NA, though, because after a slow start, it's Team Liquid all alone in first, and there's still a four-way tie for second. So what are your thoughts on the playoff race uh, after four weeks? I mean, the big surprise is CLG, right? I mean, if you look at some of the other teams that are in here, you, you know, Team Liquid's in first, and then you have C9, TSM, uh, Optic, yeah. but that's another note. Uh, it's like, how is CL possibly doing this? And they're, they're still flying under the radar at five and three, but again, really impressed. They stepped it up. Wiggly looks so much better than he did in spring and finally messing with the team. So they're one of the teams that you kind of watch out for. And then right below that, there's Golden Guardians who had a crushing loss to TSM. Mm. And Clutch who's still clinging to life at, at four and four. So there's still a lot to talk about in the playoff race. And we're going to have to wait and see if, if Clutch can actually climb into that top they're echelon of teams. But they're, they're holding on, unlike FlyQuest. So. Uh, Rip FlyQuest. Uh, let's talk about Opti Gaming, which you kind of made that little note there. Because yeah. Crown, their star player, yeah. was out for the week. Uh, but they still managed to win over TSM. So how was Scarlet, this mid laner Scarlet, able to step in and help Optic beat TSM? I mean, he's been on Optic Academy, but you still kind of expect them when they're called up with not too much time and re and like practice with the, the full team to have some struggles, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he played a comfort champion in Vladimir uh, both games, which obviously helps out on stage. If you don't want to put him into a situation where he's played the champion a couple times, you want to give him a good matchup, something he's comfortable with. Um, and he, op he popped off pretty hard. I mean, TSM, they kind of had their hands on that game, um, but then Scarlet had some really nice TP flanks, came from behind, and started to pull uh, Optic back into it, and from there they took over. Uh, his second game wasn't as amazing. Uh, they lost to Echo Fox, which is not not good, but that's okay. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Uh, they, they beat TSM, which yeah. is a very impressive win. It kind of shows that this team, I mean, obviously Kai's been performing well, but to, to plug in a mid laner that have so much success, it also tells you that the, the parts around it are that's very good. strong as that's well, good. right? And they're, they're going to tell them what to do. They're going to be like, look, there's a ward there, go TP and yeah. make these plays. So Is Vlad in the meta right now, though? A little bit. A He's little not bit? like the full-fledged top tier mid laner or whatever, okay. but he, he's being used a decent amount, yeah. All right, well, the expectations that Crown's coming back, but now that yeah. Scarlet's kind of performed really well, do you think they're gonna split time in any way, or was he just literally like a bandage solution for this moment? I do think it's kind of like a bandage. I mean, okay. he, he performed well and it was impressive, but we don't know how that would extend across an entire timeline yeah. of, of split, right? So Crown has shown that he's, he knows so many characters, he knows Twisted Fate, he's played a lot, he's pretty comfortable with the team, uh, so I don't expect him to go anywhere. It was nice to see if they have a, a potential backup if they ever want to uh, you know, put him out there, but I think they don't really have too much room to experiment because you see the standings, right? It, it's really close, so you don't want to just throw someone out there just for experience or anything like that. They're still in a tight playoff race, so every, every game matters. Okay, uh, we have to talk about 100 Thieves because this is a wow. big week for them, okay? After three weeks, things were looking so bad, but now they just went 2-0 in week four. So how on earth, Matt, did they manage to tur turn things around? It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the credit goes to Aphromoo and Bang um, because 
I'm just really impressed with how they've turned it up. It looks like their aggression is, is back in form. And I think a lot of that comes from their top laner not requiring as many resources. Because, you know, when somebody was up there, you always got to make sure that he's ahead. He's performing well. He, he requires a lot of gold as well, right? But with Fake Out up there, I mean, in the second game of the week, he was full-fledged captain. It was, it was tough. He was down 0-3, down a bunch of CS. But he absorbed the pressure and kind of allowed Amazing to go down to the bot lane and get them a lead. Ah. So I do think, ironically, getting rid of someday, not ideal because you want to have stars in every uh, lane, but yeah. if it helps the bot lane get more confident and get more help, then you go with it. And because of that, I mean, Bang and Afro were just being aggressive. Bang was flashing forward, making plays, showing off that he's still that aggressive guy. So uh, it's interesting that their move kind of works, but I also think it supplies a bit more shot calling because, you know, Ryu has super experience, been around for a long time, and with him and Afro kind of calling this shots was amazing. I think it's a pretty good looking roster. This is amazing. So it's basically just throwing fake god under the bus while the other lanes pop off. <coughs> well, I mean, he was saying that it's kind of like a, a lose lane, win game style, which is. New meta, guys. Which is actually kind of a thing. Yeah. It, it, you don't have to win your lane, you just kind of have to hang on and still be useful. I mean, he was on Kennen, right? And Kennen can still supply that, that ultimate, the AoE ultimate with the, the stun. So as long as other lanes are holding their own, losing lane isn't all that bad sometimes. So as long as you know your role and you're not like, team, help me, I'm losing, come on. You oh. know? That made me happy for a second, because I was like, yeah, I don't have to win lane. <laughs> but yeah, I always need help. Yeah, uh, so don't so don't let's talk that. about the most interesting game of the week. It was probably Golden Guardians versus TSM, yeah. because uh, both cha uh, both teams actually looked like they had a chance to win there, but then TSM managed to close that one. So uh, what did you make of this fiesta? It was definitely a fiesta. <laughs> it was quite a fiesta. I mean, man, I don't really know <laughs> what I was going to talk about. It, it was an entertaining <laughs> game, but sometimes those entertaining games don't showcase the best skill. It was kind of Burysen versus Froggen. They are both playing Bird champions. Uh, <laughs> Burysen had the Azir. Uh, Froggen had the Anivia, of course. Wow, yeah. surprise. Uh, and they just kind of went back and forth making plays. Um, and some of those plays were kind of gifted to the other team. I mean, Golden Guardians were knocking on the front door, took, took down Inhib, and then went mid. But they didn't go carefully around the corner. You know, they went right through the base, got caught, and, and just kind of threw the game away. It was, it was definitely a game of catch. Guys, and, uh, even yeah. I know not to do that. Come on! Yeah, I know, right? It was catch, but the other team didn't even catch the ball sometimes. It was, it was rough. Okay, uh, yeah. let's talk about Rift Rivals because it's coming up very close. Ooh. NA has TL, Cloud9, and TSM going up against EU's Origin, Fnatic, and G2. So how do you see this event going for NA? Not well. No, no not, not well. To put it, to put it oh, short, not, not well. I mean, Team Liquid's the only team that really looks fully in form, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they've won a bunch after that rough start, and now they're 6-2, and two, and they look like they're dominating. X Smithy is in perfect jungling form once again, whereas TSM, they've been shaky. They, they almost lost both games this weekend. They probably should have lost both games. And Cloud9 lost to 100 Thieves. And, I mean, you're going to mention G2, you're going to mention Fnatic, you're going to mention Origin. Right. Those teams are better than 100 Thieves. Right, right. Um, and even for Team Liquid, the competition for them is shaky. G2 and Fnatic are going head-to-head. -head. Even Origin's a, a tough contender. So I, I think they're going to get pretty rocked. I don't think it's going to be close. It's going to be fun either way. <laughs> That's right. uh, guys, now that we're caught up with the West, let's continue our Rift Rivals prep. We haven't touched on the LPL since Worlds, so let's check out how China is shaping up. Take a look at this, the emotions are coming huge at V5 Go. Glacial Fisher on top, Ning, can he get in into the Glacial Prison? We see again, the Javanol goes in, but he's dead immediately. Y4 now hitting at the turret too, and V5 have done it. IG again, defeated. Unexpected result, but V5 slammed them home. Vladimir's there as well. The land gets dropped on out as they jump on the cards and get popped up twice. Southwind in as well as Vladimir flashes in. Shao comes in for the flank and this is RNG fight to be taken Woo! however they want. He glides across the dead body. RNG coming to this game and this series as strong as we expected. Heading the Nexus away, flashing for the fancy play. A 2 0 for RNG again. They can just stall this one out. They've got a cannon with Baron. They go in for the engage. Condi goes in for the re engage himself. He doesn't have the cataclysm. Won't be able to find it. Hero's entrance lands, but SMLZ, look at how much damage he's doing. He dodges away the death charge with the feather storm, and he is just popping off in the team fight. Yugi getting chased down there, and it looks like Sooning are just going to be able to run this one through and dunk the 2 0 onto LGD. Just gonna get a few KDA kills and take down the Nexus. Uh, Might be dangerous for XX. Uh, this is really bad for XX. He needs to get the spike. Oh. No, he's stolen away by Forge. If they can get a pick, Balon is taking the tower. He doesn't want to be doing that. 
but if they can get a pick here, they should be able to just end it through. The Shy taking a whole lot of damage from Loken and Knight. Just he needs to zone out of this. No. He gets the kill on the Knight. This is going to be their third series win if they can just stop having a happy ending to this game. Invictus Check. Gaming take it down two to one over Top Esports. LWX with the cocoon lands, they flex on the Uzi. He ults the wrong way, but there's no right way here for oh. RNG. They sweep, they swing, they swoosh. They send out cocoons, they send out Xiaohu, who steals the Aatrox ulti. He's trying to jump in himself. He pops it early, but he's just going to get bursted down. Dilby now has a reset, jumps onto Uzi in the back line. He gets locked down by Ming, but I don't think it's the court can help. Uzi again, one, two, and three. Dilby loves him, sticks to him like glue. And FBX have done everything they need to do in this game. Clean finish here from FBX. It took a while to get there, but heading towards Worlds, heading towards Rift Rivals, FBX taking down RNG, remain at the top of the leaderboard. To help us catch up with everything LPL, we've got our pal Raz joining us. How's it going? Doing well, doing well. How's it going on your end? Not too bad, not too bad. We're excited because we got lots of League of Legends to talk about, and we want to kick it off with Invictus Gaming. Uh, so they've had a crazy start to their summer split, everything from like MSI Hangover to, of course, Rookie taking yeah. a break too for family reasons. But but they are still four and two. Mm -hmm. So we want to know how have they been able to still hang on and get through the opening weeks? It's surprising because they haven't had the five core that won the world championships and has been in MSI like since since of course like the moment. Uh, you know, rookie left is when Balan finally came back into the starting lineup. But the reason for it is, like, simply put, not only are the four members that were around him performing well, but Forge, who's been coming in from the Invictus Gaming Young lineup, the academy team, has actually just been turning it up. Uh, actually, just came off of a cast where he went up against, uh, like, the squad of Suning, and he came in huge with an 11 kill performance. So he's been a major playmaker for the team. I mean, when you first heard about rookie news, everyone is like up in arms, panicking. This team is probably screwed because he's considered like the best mid laner in the world. And then this Forge yes. guy comes in and starts performing out of his mind. So now that there's, they have this kind of new roster in place for, we don't really know how long because of rookie's absence is kind of unknown. Where do you think they rank up against some of the other top teams? It's tough to say because they're two recent performances. They took down top esports that were previously undefeated. Yeah. They took down, of course, Suning that were on the rise. I would say right now they're second place. It's kind of like, that's the hotly contested topic because FPX came off of their huge win versus RNG. And now focus right now is between RNG and Victus Gaming. But I gotta be able to give it to IG that came with one of the toughest wins so far. And they've been really performing right now with the new lineup. That's good. Well, let's talk about Fun Plus Phoenix because like you said, they took down RNG. Strong performance. So. Can you tell us like how dominant this team is right now in the LPL? Oh my god, they're <laughs> such a great team. Like, I'm just so sad that this is the type of team that hasn't been able to make it to an international just yet. And I know when they go to Rift Rivals, it's going to be insane because like Spring Split, they go so far. They're first place in the regular season. They should have made it to the finals, but then they made that crucial misstep like that allow JDG to like be able to come through in game four and game five and now they're already starting this split undefeated again so like right now all of their lanes are incredible doing be their leader their mid laner is someone that you need to be able to watch and follow he's just like that type of like uh, star power for the team now. Mm -hmm. I was about to ask you about that because we all know, I mean, Fun Plus Phoenix had a great spring split in the regular season, and now they're 6 0. They don't really show any signs of slowing down. Of course, they've always got that in the back of their head, you know, they kind of let it go in the yeah. playoffs. So, do you think they're over yeah. that, uh, that kind of loss, or is this going to be another uh, weird thing where they dominate in the regular season and then kind of choke in the playoffs? It's always hard to tell because there are a few teams that, you know, they do change whenever they get to that moment. But I feel like they have learned their lesson because they're the type of team that they take a lot of risks even when they get that huge advantage, right? And that's ultimately cost them in game four versus JDG in the playoffs. But then when it came down to a lot of their most recent performances, they're actually playing it like a little bit more safe when they get those leads. So they're still stomping and they have a huge lead. But at the end of the day, when they go to those iconic moments around Baron buff and like do they choose to take the fight or go back to base far more frequently they're just heading back to base with their money and that's <laughs> literally uh, the whole reason they ended up losing to JD during the playoffs so we'll have to see if they can keep it consistent that's good they, they've managed to kind of bring it down and meet in the middle yes that's good for now yes for now 
Um, let's talk about Sunning now because Sunning picked up Maple and Sword Art, and we know they like killed it in the ML, uh, LMS, LMS yes. a couple years ago. So these are big names. There's a lot of hype, but then Spring was less than yeah. good. Uh, so why have yeah. they had such a strong beginning to this split? This split's been huge just because I feel like a lot of the reasons why they fell through during the spring split was because they had so many like such a star power lineup but no real focus in where to end up playing right because they had Chow in the top lane of course ended up losing him in the summer split but it seemed like it's a bit of a blessing simply because now it really forced them to play through mid and bot lane that they know like going into the game that they can play to their usual star players and on top of that fluid win coming in as the coach also came in from the flash rolls so it's like essentially now you have the flash rolls mentality not only just maple and sword up but the coaching staff as well and i think it's done them a lot of good one more thing I want to ask you about is obviously RNG because you just mentioned that they're up there in second place as well between them and Invictus. Uh, you know, Karsa is another one of those LMS guys who has come in and he perf performed pretty well in spring, but now he's got full, more, more time with the team under his belt. Uzi's playing great. Uh, so where do you think they stand in terms of going forward? Because, you know, they had that, that fall to G2 in the quarterfinals, but all of a sudden they're looking good yeah. again in the LPL. I think Spring Split was like a huge gap for them where I was worried that they wouldn't be able to make it a world. And then Summer Split, when they brought in Long Sing, it really covered that top lane issue where Amazing J wasn't able to perform for the team. Now you bring in Long Sing, who's just been, of course, a major playmaker, understands his role a lot of the time, so he's able to be flexible and be on the weak side of the map a lot of the time. So for me, RNG ranks in as a top three team in the LPL. And the only question now is where do they land between FPX and NVIDIA? this gaming. I would love to be able to see RNG versus IG. I think that would be a hype matchup going into the split. All right, well, we got to talk about the event coming up because Oof. Rift Rivals uh, yeah. is soon. <laughs> and what's exciting is that they added a VCS region, right, to the mix. Uh, how does adding the Vietnamese region change up kind of, I guess, the dynamic of preparing for this tournament? It's really needed for me because whenever the, like I've been at the last few Rift Rivals and the issue is always like third seed and fourth seed from the LMS. The issue with the LMS was mostly like the depth of talent. So the first two seeds would be doing crazy, but then the third and fourth seed would be the consistent losing pieces. And now you get to see, you know, Fung Vu Buffalo, now known as the Dashing Buffalo, come back. <laughs> we saw what they were able to do during like MSI and they're a really talented team so I want to be able to see that and of course the old organization that we saw in the previous MSI uh, Evos also being able to make that I think it's just great to see com uh, competition rise and I think BCS has been that uh, region really clashing with the LMS it's kind of funny that now they're kind of tag teaming in this one uh, to be able to challenge LPL and LCK yeah, I mean, how, how many times have we seen the teams like Fung Buffalo actually challenge some of the top teams at Worlds and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but now they actually get yes. more international practice, which is going to be a huge deal. But of course, the LPL's main competition is the LCK. We all know that. <laughs> How does IG, FPX, JD Gaming, and Top Esports ship against uh, SKT, Griffin, Damwon, and Kingzone? It's going to be a pretty teams. crazy uh, clash between these two. It's going to be crazy, and the seeds make it all jumbled because it feels like the team that's performing the worst right now in the LCK is the first seeded SKT. It's crazy to be able to say that right now, that they're like seventh place, uh, or at least think that they're like eighth place or something right now in the LCK. Same thing you could say about LPL, but like Invictus Gaming are starting to really gather themselves, where right now I'd say I'm, initially I was favoring the LCK just because they have Griffin and Kingzone, Dragon X, and Adamwon. They're all performing well, and I was concerned about Invictus Gaming, but after tonight, I think that changes everything. I would lean towards uh, LPL just because, you know, FPX right now don't seem to be stoppable. I would say Top Esports and Invictus Gaming are now in like that echelon just underneath them. I think we have a deep pool, and that's what you really need at this tournament. You can't just be like last time. KT understood it. The last time we were in Rift Rivals, you can't just be the strongest team. You need to actually have a strong pool of teams coming through because you can't just solo carry it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we mentioned last time when we all when we spoke together that LCK. You know, we're wondering whether LCK can make it back to their top form, back be on top of all the regions. Do you see that happening, or do you think this? Uh, it's not. It's not happened for the LCK yet. I think it's happening. I think it's going to be a lot better than the Worlds and, of course, MSI showing just simply because there's a new 
a breath of talent coming in. Mm -hmm. Like Don Juan is going to be a new team coming through from the LCK. And certainly like Griffin, a team that literally couldn't make MSI or Worlds. This is a great experience for them. So like a good shot and opportunity for players that weren't able to make that chance. And I think for LCK, it's going to be great for uh, the region to be able to see that kind of talent coming through. Because for so long, we've just been seeing the usual teams uh, like Afrika Freaks and all that being able to get to the world a tournament play a slow style mm -hmm. and then of course the LCK fans are not getting what they want on that one now we're seeing the same skirmishing style that kind of matches with the LPL and I think that's kind of the identity the LCK needs to be able to be back on top interesting so you've been killing it with the predictions on the desk for LPL you're, you're leading and I'm sure you know you're gonna let yeah, people know about it there you go <laughs> um, but let's get a hard prediction for Rift Rivals too what region and what team in particular is going to be, be the champions of Rift Rivals here Ooh, I think it's going to be LPL, and Europe. I'm going to go for FPX. FPX right now look too good, and I think the big matchup you want to see is uh, Griffin versus FPX. Yes. That's the dream. I, yes, I don't know absolutely. about this Griffin thing. Okay, listen, I don't follow LCK super closely, but they've had yeah. moments where they choked when they everyone was hyping them up so hard. So yeah. how is this not just another, you know, time where they're hyped up super hard? And they're see, too young. I understand young. that. <laughs> I think that's the case. I think right now, them being able to have this event, finally an international event where they can get underneath the spotlight and be comfortable with it. I still look at the LCK pool and say that SKT is not, an, uh, is not good enough at the moment. Maybe they gather themselves for the tournament, but I don't think they have enough time to be able to get there. Uh, Kingzone and Dom One, I think, are just a step below Griffin. So we'll see what happens, Griffin. I have faith. Like, I have faith right now. This split, Griffin's going to be able to do it. So if I, if I falter, okay. But at least it's not KT. There's still some <laughs> reason to have faith behind them. Hopefully it's not another situation where it's like you, you kind of fall back with your ex for like the, the fourth time and they, they still disappoint you. They still you, hurt you. Know? you. Yeah, you yes. don't want that again. <laughs> um, you definitely let's... don't want that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about NA and EU for a bit. Uh, we want to get your thoughts. The rivalry right now for NA and EU is, I think, one apiece. Yes. Uh, which region do you favor in this one? Oh, my God. Right <laughs> now, I'd say EU. I'll say EU right now. Because I think not only do you have the champions in G2, I, they're 100% the best team right now in the world based off the fact that they're able to get in MSI. But the depth too, like Fnatic? God damn! I, I, I'm loving Fnatic's performance at the moment. I think Origin, if they end up going through, and I think they do, yeah, third seed. Yeah. Uh, they just have a lot of teams right now that I feel like are ready for an international where on the side of, uh, you know, North America... I would say specifically Cloud9 and TSM aren't looking too uh, steady at the moment, uh, you know, regionally. And they just have a few cogs right now, a few uh, points of the map that I feel like needs shaping up. Fair enough. They need Optic Gaming to go and then they'll be fine, right? Of course. Oh, there we go. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, one hypothetical for you. Obviously, EU doesn't face the LPL, but I mean, there's some strong teams in EU right now, as you just said, Fnatic and G2. So do you think Fun Plus uh, Phoenix would get the edge over teams like G2 and Fnatic? I would say Fnatic. Uh, for G2, it's going to be tough. I think for G2... Uh, see, the, the craziest thing right now is the strength of G2 definitely lines up with the strength of um, uh, Fun Plus Phoenix, where it's mid lane and jungle, Doom BNTN, like they're a dynamic duo in a lot of cases, and they constantly force fights through bot side, and G2 is the type of team that also ramps it up really early on through mid jungle too. So if it's between Doom B and Caps... God, I have no idea. That's the one <laughs> prediction I will not make because I Ooh. can't put my money behind that. <laughs> well, luckily you don't have do to. It. They're not playing. So yeah. you're good. There we go. <laughs> All right, Raz, we always appreciate you chatting with us. Thank you so much again and have a blast at Rift Rivals. Thank you for having me. I'm going to have fun with it. <laughs> All right, there's definitely a lot of excitement yes. for Rift Rivals, and that actually all starts on Thursday, so make sure you guys check that out. But Matt, final order of business. It's time for Player of the Week. Uh -oh. Who's your pick? I'm excited. So, I mean, I didn't expect it to be who it was going to be this week because the team that is going to get the Player of the Week. This is a lot of build-up right now. <laughs> uh, is, yeah, I know. I'm going to build it up real big. They went 2-0, uh, 100 Thieves, and the guy who really stood up to me during this whole series was their AD carry bang. I mean, we've been waiting for some of these standout performances from him for a while, but he really showed up uh, the entire weekend. They got a huge win over Cloud9.
uh, which is not exactly what we were expecting. And a lot of that was because of Bang showing off that he's still this really aggressive AD carry when he wants to be. And I mean, part of it too is that their, their top laner has taken a lot of that pressure, mm -hmm. so Amazing can actually go on to help them out. And then once he gets that lead, he's flashing forward, he's going in, he's QSSing perfectly on time, and he just really showed off to Zaya in both games. And you know what? I mean, it's, it's overdue, but it's nice to see Aggressive Bang finally come back out. It looks like his confidence is back. I mean, after he made uh, one of those stand-up plays in the comms, he was like, yeah, that's right, this is Bang. Oh. And it's like, okay, th that's what we want from him, right? We want him to be himself, we want him to be comfortable on stage. Yeah. And it looks like he's finally meshing with maybe some better shot calling from the team as well. So, huge shout out to Bang, and of course, uh, 100 Thieves uh, going 2-0. What is happening? There you go, the faith is being rewarded. <laughs> the only 100 Thieves fan left is me, yeah, and me. I am so excited. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today's Esports in 30. Huge shout outs to Raz for joining us. Tomorrow, it'll be an Overwatch League recap with AJ and Ron, and there were some crazy upsets to discuss, so until then you know what to do. Hit us up on all our socials at Squad State and we'll see you tomorrow.